focus focus up i'm talking to you mike monahan i saw that you got married i did not get an invite but that's okay since you were a monahan i'm assuming it was at the milwaukee uh, harley davidson museum and that's no big deal welcome my name is chris rubio to the rubio method along with lord nicholas monahan this is episode 38 we've got four segments coming at you real hot we've got the intro then monahan, monahan and i are going to banter a little then we've got the interview with the great samuel rogers you're going to love this guy just a little bit accomplished. Um, and then we're going to have the bottom line where I'm going to wrap it all up for you. What's on in store, on store, in, it will say in store for today's episode, snacks that are good for you. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Dead relatives. Ooh, that turned out weird. Uh, our hobbies, board games, competing in a triathlon, the greatest position in football. I might be biased here. Health and nutrition and major challenges in life. All that and much, much more on today's episode of the Rubio Method. Christian, I'm out. Focus. Focus up. I'm talking to you. One shot Charlie's out in Harrison, Idaho. Keep up the great work. And you have a sp specific drink. That's a hard word to say, Monahan, that is just outstanding. I'll let everyone figure it out, that out if they ever go to one shot Charlie's in Harrison, Idaho. Keep up the great work, guys. Monahan, how are you, my man? I, congratulations. I just saw that you moved into your, did you move in yet to your new home? Yeah, so we bought a home. We closed yesterday, but I'm actually renovating it. So we probably won't move in for another month or two, which is like, it's so tough. You're like super excited, and but you can't even move in yet. Monahan, do you have any experience in renovation of a home? <laughs> Sl yeah, two. Slim and none. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Slim just walked out the door? That's right. <laughs> so you have no idea what the hell you're doing, and you're going to renovate this house? That's right. YouTube's the backbone of the society. We also have the help of my uh, father-in-law. He is He actually knows what he's doing. So he's what, just what, what is his job, or what was his job? The cabinets. He builds cabinets and all that good stuff. So, he, so your cabinets will be solid, but in Minnesota, the the snow is just going to roll through. So exactly. your top ramen will be safe in your pantry, but the rest of your house is going to be just an absolute hellhole. Christian says DIY TV. I don't know. What is that? Do it. Yeah. Do it said. yourself. Is that what that stands for? It's going to be uh, my life. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Monahan. What, what's your minute with Monahan today? Yes. All right. As always, I always say this. we got a good one. I love this one because – this is super important, especially us fellas. We're always on the go, and we can generally eat like crap as we are on the go. So I figured uh, a way we could talk about good mental health is good nutrition. Um, and so this is four healthy snacks for you. Uh, so when you're on the go, you just pack, pack these snack up, snacks up, and you're on your way. So number one is actually a personal favorite of mine, um, almond butter and apples. If you've never had that, it absolutely slaps, almond butter and apples. Um, the second one is cottage cheese and tomatoes. You can get like Trash. baby tomatoes. I know I'm not a big fan, but I, I saw this on this list and I tried them and I thought it was only okay, but some people like them. Um, number three is high protein yogurt with uh fruits and berries. Uh, that's always a good thing that high protein, it gets you nice and full. So you're not constantly, you know, snacking down the way. And number four is, uh, is making sure that you grab, I actually have to look cause I wrote it down and, oh yes. Um, uh, whey protein and bananas. Uh, if you, if you're feeling funky, you can throw some peanut butter in there, but again, those high protein meals and snacks really help get you to your next meal. So you're nice and full. Okay, so let's recap here. Almond butter with apples, which, by the way, I, I know this. Uh, is a, That's your good fan of Tucker Carlson. I think that's what he eats every breakfast. So you must have checked on that from him because I know you're his number one fan. Uh, number two is cottage cheese, which I'm not 97 years old, so I'm not eating that. Monahan, I refuse to do that. <laughs> and, and it tastes like crap. And it, it, the consistency of it is absolutely disgusting. So scratch that one. Uh, number three, <laughs> yogurt. I, I'm on board with that. And I'm going to throw in a little granola as well just because I like that. And four bananas and whey protein or wheat whey protein. I don't know what. Well, Sam, yeah, yeah. he, he's more of the nutritionist. That, that I, I'm on board for that one as well. Good job, Monahan. I like those. What what email questions do you have for us? Remember, you can email Rubio at the Rubio and you guys are doing a great job of sharing on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, Google, Rumble, and of course Apple as well. So, Monahan, what's the email questions you got for us? Man, this is a strong set of email questions this week. Uh, first one, this one, man, you said it in the intro, this one really got me, but 
Um, this song's from Shelly in Oregon. says, kind of a deep question, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but I was wondering, if you could bring back a relative of yours to see your life now, who would it be and why? Um, I'm going to take that one first. Uh, my grandfather was uh, pretty much the world's biggest badass. He was in the 101st Airborne. He paratrooped down in D-Day and walked his ass all the way across uh, France, uh, all the way to Bastogne and Market Garden and all those. So I'd love to meet him and, and hang out with him and show him my life today. What about you, yeah, Reveal? And if you complain one time about your little do-it-yourself project, you remember your grandfather who literally walked across a country. <laughs> yeah. for the love of god okay <laughs> this is a, this is a really good question um there's several several that i would like to bring back but i i think i'm going to choose my mother-in-law and I, I i think that counts as a relative i i yeah. think i don't know i'm not a scientist but i would bring back my mother-in-law just because we've got a house up where she was uh from and i think she would really like to see damon dale and all that and she was a real spunky lady and i think she would she would love the way things are going right now and she'd be a great guest on the show as well so let's move on from that because I'm going to start crying. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and and knowing Queen, I feel like they probably are the same personality. I feel like. Oh, like yeah. My wife is getting to the age where she's slowly turning into her father and her mother at the same point. And, and it's just it's it's very interesting to watch. I can imagine. Well, let's go next one so we don't get any tears cooking. Yeah. <laughs> next is from Marissa in Eagle, Idaho. We love Eagle, Idaho. That place is awesome. Uh, real easy question. What are your hobbies? Rubio, do you want to get that one? My hobbies. I like to eat and drink with my friends and family. I'm a big fan of that. Just talking. I love to argue, but I, I'd say my, uh, my big hobby is obviously this show, the Rubio method. And I also host another show on the NGBN network called decades. If you have not seen that, I would highly recommend it. It's a group of guys where we get to guys in their sixties, fifties, forties, thirties, and twenties, all different beliefs. And we bring up topics. I'm the host, uh, bring up topics that you normally would not talk about to try to argue with each other and finally at the end agree to disagree if we need to so it comes out pretty much every wednesday check it out decades you'll you'll like it and i, I do a pretty good job of poking the bear so it's good monahan what about you that's that's great and i have watched that show it's really good if you're if you like to get a little spicy but also respectful watch that show because they do a great job with it um my hobbies uh i think i talk about them all the time is riding my harley i I love getting on my motorcycle and just getting Sore to go. Subject. <laughs> hey, we're coming up on December here pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love riding my Harley. Um, what else? I love hanging, just like you, Rubio, I love hanging out with my family. I have a young family. We have a one-year-old Jetty Bear, and um, just watching him grow is, like, so much fun, and you want to capture every single minute of it. So, yeah, I'd say riding my Harley and uh, hanging with the fam. Very good. What's the last question, Monahan? Last one, let's wrap it up. This is Tina from Fort Worth, Texas. Um, says, do you guys like to play board games with your families? And which one? I'll take that one as well first. Dude, I love board games. Board games are literally so, so, so much fun, especially with the little booze in your hand. Like, for a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. My favorite game actually is one that my wife's family showed me. It's called Carbles. Um, and it's it's like, I guess it's like Sorry. Uh, but with like marbles on this table and then you have cards, it's literally, we, we go on mountain trips and play that for hours. And what, what's it called? Spell, spell it. How do you spell it? It's called Carbles. K-A-R-B-L-E-S. Oh, mar marbles with a C. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Or whatever. I don't know. I think it's a C or a K. I can't remember. But good it's God. a blast. Usually by the end of it, the board's moving and it's just good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I, I loathe board games. I can't stand them. I'm, so I, I'm not a guy that likes games of chance. I like games of skill, number one. Number two, I have zero patience with people. And the, the closer I am to a person, whether they're friends or family, the less patience I have with them because I expect more from them. And so my, my wife and her family, they absolutely love board games. I grew up not playing board games. I, 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 there's certain people that I refuse to play with who are just terrible gunner. I'm talking to you that are just bad at Pictionary where I can't stand the person that's like, they'll guess, Oh, it's goldfish. No, it's not a goldfish it, goldfish. No, it's not a goldfish goldfish. Like I've said it three times. Why do I have to keep saying it? Like I, that I have zero patience. I hate board games. Don't ever play them with me on that note. We're done with this segment. We've got a great interview with Sam Rogers coming up. And we're also going to have the bottom line on that note, Monahan, 
I'm out. Christian, I'm out. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Focus, focus up. I'm talking to you, Anthony Cobbs. What is going on, AC? Thanks for being a great guest on episode 37. If you have not seen that, you can go to YouTube, Spotify, Google, Amazon, Rumble, and of course, iTunes. Welcome back to episode 38 of the Rubio Method. As you know, my name is Chris Rubio. We've got a fantastic guest, Sam Rogers. What is up, my man? Rubio, how you doing? It's been a while. Thanks for having me on. It has been a while. Let, let me tell you a little bit who Sam Rogers is. He's a graduate of Syracuse. He was a long snapper, rah, rah, and Cornell for law school. He's an assistant district attorney at Madison County in New York, and he just started a personal Substack titled Dear Dad, which is a weekly newsletter encouraging readers to optimize their nutrition and health. Sam, welcome to the Rubio Method. Are you ready for three quick questions to get you moving? Yep, let's, let's hear them. Number one, you just completed a triathlon. Was it harder physically or mentally? Uh, much harder physically. I, I enjoyed the mental part of it and the training. And it's a lot of time out with yourself, which I'm an introvert. So I like that. The physical race day was you're pushing yourself to the limit for about two and a half hours, the distance I did. And uh, it was quite exhausting, but I, I felt great afterwards. So how, how long, how often do you have to train for this? Uh, Is it it's, daily? It's it kind of my daily exercise routine. Yeah. So I did an Olympic distance triathlon, which is a 1500 meter swim in a lake and then a 24 mile bike followed by a 10 K run. Um, I would like to try and maybe increase some distances, maybe get better at that distance, but you know, former football player, uh, looking for ways to challenge myself, uh, physically yeah, yeah. as I now get older. Well, yeah. How old are you right now? Uh, good question. Uh, 31. <laughs> yeah, once you get past 21, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, you wait for 25 because you can like rent a car or something like that. But <laughs> then you hit 30 and then eh, who cares? All right. Number two, you are obviously super into health. But when you let yourself go, what's your cheat meal? Um, I'd say usually it's a dessert with my wife when we go out for dinner. Um, yes. I love my, my favorite dessert is a uh, cookie a la mode. Nice, warm chocolate chip cookie with vanilla yes. ice cream. But I'll say that that is consumed very, very few uh, times. <laughs> yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I think like BJ's restaurant has one. It's called the bazooki or something. And I, I'm, I'm the guy that where I burn my mouth every time on the cookie because they bring it out in that lava tray. And I yep. just let it rain because it's so, so, oh, God, you, now I'm hungry. Number three, last question for you, quick, uh, quick one for you, Sam. Why is long snapper the best position in football? High intense situations. Oh, it is. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a tricky thing. I always say because, you know, you only get so many times and no one knows your name unless you messed up. I mean, I could probably interview a thousand Syracuse graduates and say, who was your long snapper 15 years ago? And be, uh, 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 because you never exactly. messed up because you, you, you were coached very, very well, we'll say. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll tell you, when I uh, got my Rubio top 12, that was one of the one of the most significant athletic achievements that I remember in high school, knowing that, you know, I might actually be kind of good at this. <laughs> yeah. It kind of panned out for you. That, that's awesome. Sam. You just, you make it make, make me a little emotional right now. We're going to move past that. So I don't want to cry for the second time on today's show. All right, Sam, college football player, lawyer, assistant district attorney, triathlete, Substack writer. Are, are you superhuman or what? I, I enjoy, uh, reading and writing and thinking about what I want to do. So I've been uh, pretty active so far. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, playing football at Syracuse was such a blessing, such a fun time. Um, I actually had some NFL tryouts that mm -hmm. didn't pan out. So I guess that X's out the superhuman aspect. Oh, you're um, fine. But again, everything that happened in football and the lessons you learn 
have just taught me so much as I went through law school and as now I'm a trial attorney and loving it. And it kind of that motivation to continue doing something is how I got into triathlon. So you're just always pushing yourself. Did, did, were you born with that trait or did you learn that along the way? Um, I'd say a little bit of both. Uh, but what I found is I think challenging yourself is, is a way to a, achieve happiness. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people, you know, for some reason we're drawn to the com comfort, but when we get stuck in that monotony, then, you know, it's kind of day after day, what are you, what are you doing? So I found that putting some challenges out in the future kind of help you move forward towards goals. They help you have a sense of accomplishment, help you figure out what you really like to do and who you are. Um, so I, I've just really enjoyed that aspect. I think I, the hard part is, you know, for someone who's driven or maybe more type A is figuring out, you know, it's okay to press the brake sometimes. Yeah. So sometimes it's a one step back, two steps forward. Um, and I've enjoyed that kind of now after football and law school where it was go, 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 go. Now I have some time where I'm more in a consistent job and I have a lot of time to think about other interests and write and read and uh, run and bike and swim. <laughs> just just a couple little hobbies. Do you write all your goals down? How do you how do you keep from getting bogged down with them? Yeah, I do. I, I write a lot of my goals down. I do what I like to call mental free time. <laughs> I try and do that okay. at least once a week on the weekend. Uh, Explain with a cup of coffee, just a notebook, and uh, really just let myself think. I, I don't have my phone on, I don't have my computer out, I have a pen and paper, and think about what am I thinking about? What happened this week um, that I wanna make note of? What, what do I wanna do in the future? And really that's where I kind of came up with the idea of, you know, I've been exercising very consistently lately, I'm getting a little bored, how can I challenge myself? triathlon. I had some friends that do triathlon. So I started picking their brains on how to accomplish it and went from there. But I think that a lot of what I do comes from the time that I spend actually thinking about it. I think a lot of people, they just kind of let the, the inputs from the world, whether it be social media or friends or whatever, kind of determine what they do. And I found a lot of uh, you know, it's been very helpful for me to think about, well, what do I think? What do I want to do? Not what, you know, kind of culture is telling you to do. Ooh, I like that. A self-aware man. Sam, explain to me a bit more about why you wanted to start your Substack, Dear Dad. What, what it's about. Tell everyone what it's about. Why'd you want to start it? Yeah, so I was, I was a nutrition major in college and then found my way to law school, uh, which I loved law school love being an attorney, um, but I do have this health and wellness bend that's kind of always been at my core. And a lot of that started from, you know, way back in middle school when I was eating any type of candy, drinking any soda I could get my hands on. Um, and then realized, you know, if I'm going to actually be an athlete, like I think I could be, I better start taking some things more seriously. That kind of developed into this, this, I, this uh, love for nutrition and wellness and um, so now that I'm done with law school and I'm an attorney, I, I've really gotten back into that uh, love for trying to encourage other people to think about, you know, what are you eating? How are you moving? And how does it relate to your happiness? Um, one thing that I've found and other people probably understand, too, is those conversations can sometimes be kind of awkward. Nobody mm -hmm. likes to be called out for, you know, why are you eating poorly or why would you choose that or why aren't you exercising? But we kind of all know intuitively that nutrition matters and that we should be moving or exercising in some way. And I've thought there's probably a lot of people my age who, when they think about these conversations, they think about their parents mm -hmm. Um or, you know, they might have a kid that they're, you know, Nick was just on here. He has a one-year-old son now. So there's different things to live for and to understand mm -hmm. that your nutrition and your exercise routine matters and it will make a difference. Um, so I wrote Dear Dad and I started Dear Dad as a sub stack to kind of break that barrier of we need to have these conversations with people we love most. And we just need to put it out there. There's a lot of different practical tips that we can use to just 
be a little bit better in how we eat or how we exercise and how we think about uh, our wellness uh, altogether. So that was kind of the motivation. It's really just a passion project. Um, I'm at least going to post 10 weeks of a newsletter and see where it goes. But it's something I really enjoy thinking about. I really enjoy trying to encourage others because I believe it can solve a lot of problems when we start to take care of our health through nutrition and exercise. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, physically, but and mentally as well. 100%. 100%. I, I think it, it all goes together. And for me, when I, when I started making the changes way back in high school, I felt it immediately mm -hmm. where I was, I was more interactive in class. I felt better about myself. I performed better academically and with my sports. And it, it just completely changed my outlook on life and really what I was capable of. That's yeah, the super it, it's, it's so hard too, because I think some people need to be told like, Hey, let's try to eat more apples or something like that. And then certain people you need to say, Hey, you, you got to stop being a fat ass. Stop eating so many Reese's peanut butter cups. I mean, it's, it's the fine line. Is your, is your sub stack going to be more fluffy or is it going to be more in your face? Uh, I'm probably going to try and thread the needle a little bit Ooh. to talk to as many people as possible. I think, I think one, one thing I like to think about when you're thinking about what to eat is, you know, well, what, what's it replacing? So eating instead of what, you know, Monahan gave the four, his four snacks um, at the beginning of this show. And I think a good question to think about is, well, what's it replacing? You know, all those snacks are great choices when they're replacing chips or yeah. ice cream, which a lot of people, uh, we have a culture of mindless eating where, you know, you eat food because it's there. Um, there's not a lot of thinking behind what's actually going to nourish my body and promote my health long term. And it's crazy too, because the healthier options are usually more expensive, which is wild. I think that's sometimes true. I, I also yeah. think that it's, um, you know, I read a, there's a book born to run, which was written like 12 years ago, very good book. And a USA track coach is quoted in that book with his diet advice for his Olympic athletes. And he says, eat as if you were a poor person. And what oh. he means by that is, I mean, if you go into the grocery store, rice, beans, yeah, 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 raw vegetables, those are some of the, the healthiest things that you can eat. And they're some of the cheapest. I traveled to Haiti when I was in college on a mission trip, and that's all we ate was rice, beans, and veggies. So you can do it uh, in a healthy way. I will say where it becomes really expensive is when you try and do it eating out. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. I should have. Yeah, when you go to that. restaurants and it, it's so hard because one thing yeah. that I love about eating very healthy is I actually get to eat a bigger volume of food. Yes. Because it's less calories, but I feel like restaurants don't necessarily make up for that. So mm -hmm. if you get a steak and potatoes, it's going to come on the, you know, generally the same size plate as your, what your salad but you're going to be so hungry because you, you should see the salad I eat every night for dinner. It's like in a punch bowl because the <laughs> calories just aren't, uh, there aren't as many calories. So you just feel fuller and more energized. Sam, you had a comment on the, the little uh, pre-show sheet I gave you. I want, what do you mean when you say intentional actions are needed to fully achieve health and happiness? Kind of what I was talking about a little bit earlier is, um, be intentional. I think we have a, and it all goes together, whether it's your food, your exercise, or just your health and well being all together. You got to be intentional about what you're doing. And I think a lot of people, me included at times, get caught up with the just living very passively, where we're just reacting to what's happening around us. We're scrolling through Twitter, getting our ideas from who's tweeting what and pictures on Instagram of, you know, oh, that person looks like they're having fun because they went to the beach and you're never thinking about, well, you know, for me, what makes me happy? Maybe I don't want to go to the beach. Maybe I don't like the beach, but that picture is making you feel like that's what you need. I think we need people who are more comfortable with, well, what actually do I want to do and be intentional in that um, to really explore what are your passions? Where is your potential? And what you, what should you be doing with your time? I love that. How do you plan on making sure people implement all the lessons you're going to be teaching in Dear Dad? 
Uh, I would say it's more just to plant the seed. I, I can't, I can't really in, make sure they implement it. You know, a lot of it is seeing who's receptive and who's not. Maybe they're not ready to hear it right now, or maybe they're just going to throw up the defensive wall. Um, but maybe later it will come back to them and they'll take some of the practical lessons and it'll make a difference. My biggest argument for people who come across it and read it would be just try it. I'm going to give you some practical tips. Just try it. It's one. Day. Try it for a day. Try it for a week and see if you feel better, because I bet you will. And 100%. I think that's that's uh, one thing I've I've really enjoyed is kind of trying those experiments with myself. Now that I have the time, I don't need to worry about am I performing at my best on Saturday? I have some room for some mistakes and just try it. What do I like to eat? What makes me feel better? How do I like to exercise? And, uh, you know, just be a scientist on yourself. I think that's um, something that I've learned is just always be studying yourself and you'll find kind of what you, what makes you happy. I love that. Sam, what do you think are today's biggest hiccups for men in today's society? Because you're in my mind right now, I'm looking at this dude. I'm like, Jesus, his, this guy's superhuman. He, he's macho. He's alpha male. W what's stopping other men from being that way in society? Well, first, I'd say thank you. I, um, <laughs> I, I would say what I've done so far is really just follow my interests. And again, be intentional about what I'm doing. I ended up in law school after I studied nutrition, not because that's a normal path. I may have been the only person who studied nutrition that was in law school at the time. But I talked to mentors and I talked to people um, who I trust, and I was kind of led that way. So again, we've talked a lot about being intentional about how you're spending your time. I think your time is your greatest resource. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of things in society today are stealing your time, whether that be social media, whether it be TV or whatnot. And that doesn't mean that there's not places for that. You know, I watch a TV show usually every night with my wife and I'm, I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn, but a lot of these things are tools. They're not kind of end goals. So you can set them up where you're getting input positively versus, oh, I'm just mindlessly scrolling. Um, I would say, again, kind of, we also talked about it is just being comfortable having time with yourself and exploring what you really like. I do that through a practice of, you know, at least once a week, the solitude, um, no input from anyone else. And also I get it when I'm out on my bike for two hours. That's one thing I like about training for triathlons is you have a lot of time. And I'll tell you, the conversations you have with yourself when you're out on your bike and it's been an hour and a half, it's in the hot sun. I really think you find out who you really are, what you really care about. And it's just time that is so valuable to me. And I encourage other people to put the phone away and, and just think, spend some time with your own thoughts and find out what do you really want to do? Because when we think about being happy, a lot of it comes from either one, having a purpose, but then also living consistently with your core values. And to know what those core values are, you actually have to think about, well, what are my core values and how can I live better aligned with those? And everyone's core values usually are different. Your core values may be different than mine, and that's okay as long as we're both not asses. A hundred percent. And you'll find that, you know, when you actually know what your core values are, and you live according to those core values, you're going to find happiness and you're going to find a purpose and you're going to wake up every day kind of enthusiastic about what you get to try and accomplish. Sam, you are phenomenal. Uh, well done. I thought this would be good. This turned out great. Where can people find out about Dear Dad and find out about you? Uh, the easiest place is probably Twitter. I'm, I'm not huge on social media, but I do tweet uh, occasionally I'm trying to tweet out the dear dad a little bit more, um, you know, since it's positive and it's something I care about, but I'm J Sam Rogers on Twitter. I'm the same on LinkedIn. Um, direct message me, tweet at me, follow me. Something like that would be the best way to contact me. J Sam Rogers. Thank you very much, Sam. Give your family a big hug for me on that note. We've coming up next with the bottom line, Christian, I'm out.
do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Focus, focus up. I'm talking to you, Gee, out in Canada. That's G-U-I. I can't say your whole name. I'm not even gonna try. Well, I'll try. It's like Guillaume Pereira. It's a Canadian name. I don't know. Uh, keep up the great work with all you're doing at the NGBN community, and make sure you, the audience, do a great job or continue your great job of sharing on YouTube, Spotify, Google, Amazon, Apple, and Rumble. Welcome back to episode 38. We just finished a fantastic interview with the great Sam Rogers. Now we're going to talk about the bottom line. The bottom line for all those new listeners and watchers is all the stuff you should have learned without even realizing you learned it. Number one, make snack time the right time. Make sure you, what Monahan gave us for, uh, apples and almond butter, uh, cottage cheese. I'm skipping that one. That's trash. Uh, bananas, and then yogurt. Make snack time the right time. That's an easy one. Simple, simple fix. Put down the chips for a little bit and then pick up the good, proper snacks. Number two, even though you can't technically bring them back, you can mentally bring them to share with those that don't remember or know. This goes back to the question that we had about the dead relatives. Yes, it got me a little sad. Wanted to cry a little bit, but I, I stood strong. Um, you can't bring back dead relatives, but you can tell the next generation about them. Maybe even nowadays you have video or phone messages and things like that keep their memories alive so the next generation know exactly who what their greatness was number three be intentional with your actions for a better overall life sam rogers said this countless time be intentional with your actions for a better overall life have some goals spend some me time find out exactly what you're going to do set a goal and stick to it just like we stick to this being a great great show Whoo, episode 38. This was a very solid, solid episode. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of Monahan. I'm proud of you, Christian, in the background that no one could see. And I'm proud of Sam Rogers. On that note, Christian, I'm out.